Well, later this month, we will, in fact, re-enter the Matrix. So, let's check out the latest trailer that has dropped to tempt us to do so. We can't see it. But we're all trapped inside these strange repeating loops. Billions of people just living out their lives. Oblivious. But this is the moment for you to show us what is real. think it is. They taught you good. Made you believe their world was all you deserved. But some part of you knew that was a lie. Some part of you remembered what was real. It's so easy to forget how much noise the Matrix pumps into your head. Something else makes the same kind of noise. War. important choice in Neo's life. It's not his to make. She believed in me. It's my turn to believe in her. Part of me feels like I have been waiting my whole life for you. If you want to see Trinity again, fight for her! Very pretty movie. My dream ended here. <laughs> Still no kung fu. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. So I will be curious to see. If they're gonna do as much deliberate rhyming of the previous films, the first one especially, with this one in the film itself. Like, I don't doubt that those scenes that they were rhyming it with, like with whoever this other guy is, saying lines that Agent Smith had said, or certain shots being repeats of previous shots. I'm sure that'll be in the movie. I'll be curious to see if they're gonna draw as much attention to it as the trailer does. Um, it, I'm not sure it'll massively impact my opinion of the film one way or another, but that's something I'm immediately curious about. It's really interesting, the idea that they're going to focus on the repetition, on the repeats, on the loop, about how things are the same, yet also different. That's, that's an interesting thing to land on, especially because that kind of repetition, that kind of stuck in the same place things are repeating isn't something that I can think of a time when a franchise has addressed that in universe, like in, in a actual grappling with it kind of way. I've seen it addressed in comedic ways, you know, TV shows being like, oh God, I swear this happens to us every week or, you know, whatever. But most of the things that I can think of that deal with more circular narratives, that deal with loops, that deal with being trapped in a pattern tend to be one-offs. They tend to be... Um, things that are built to just be that story. You know, your um, Edge of Tomorrows, your Groundhog Days, et cetera, your time crimes, so forth. So it's, uh, it's interesting to see something, especially something that's having its fourth entry, make a story out of the fact that they are going to repeating, be repeating some of the same beats, but also not quite. 
it's it's a bold idea to try and make that the actual narrative. I am I'm part of the reason I'm going to make this comparison is because I I I think I've I've wrapped up playing the game relatively recently. I need to do a video on it. I will. Um, but I've been playing Hades this year. And part of what made Hades really cool was that for a roguelite where, you know, you die and have to go back to the beginning and start your run over, that's not just the way that the thing moves forward. That's the actual story. The plot of the game is you are dying and trying again. That's the actual narrative. And everybody knows that's what's happening to you, yourself included. So I feel like the Matrix trying to do this, yeah, no, we've definitely done this before, and then trying to comment on that, it gives me that vibe that that Hades did. Um, so it's it's a it's a bold thing to try and do. It it takes a lot of guts to take like to have a story idea, realize something that's going to be complained about your starting premise and then make the story out of what might be a complaint. You're repeating a bunch of the same beats. Okay, that's the plot now. You know, every time you die, you have to go back to the start of the game and we do the whole thing over. We know that's the narrative. You know, it's it's it takes guts to not only confront those sorts of ideas head on, but to make them the story. It looks good, which like Matrix film really should. And I like that there's a, there seems to be less showy emphasis, at least on the kinds of things that the previous Matrix, fil Matrix films did. You know, the, the sheer scope and scale of the action, because at the time that they happened, things like the bullet dodging, like the burly brawl in uh, the second one, like Smith versus Neo in the third one, those hadn't really been done before at all. At this point, there isn't too much that they can do, at least that I can think of, that is going to be completely new, especially in a world they've already been playing with up to this point. Well, I say they, it's just Lana Wachowski now, but I mean they as the collective filmmakers, um, all those involved. So what uh, a good way to focus on to so that it still really visually pops without necessarily having to be groundbreaking the way the previous three were is to just make it look freaking gorgeous. Oh, those shots are pretty. Like, and that's an interesting way to go and an interesting way to contrast with what the previous movies were because the previous films were very cool looking and the effects were very showing. They definitely stuck in your head. But I would argue that, that that franchise, those films, weren't really shot in a way to be pretty. I mean, anything set inside the Matrix itself was shot to be slightly off-putting. So it didn't really go for pretty. That's, that's an interesting new way to go, to give it a visual identity distinct and yet rhymes with the other stuff, because it's going to have a... a an intense visual flair, just not the same one the previous ones had. I'm really curious. I hesitate to say I'm super excited because I saw the first two sequels in the theater to Diminishing Returns every time. I do think both of those are overhated, for the record. Um, but they, they are some deeply flawed films. Um, but... I'm definitely curious, like, especially at this point, knowing how much um, Lana Wachowski, well, both of them really, but Lana's the one here, Lana Wachowski has evolved as a filmmaker. Um, I'll be really curious to see how the sensibilities of something like Sense8, like Cloud Atlas, heck, even like Jupiter Ascending, is going to inform the way that this is presented. And I like that it's not trying to just look like the previous films. That's a good call. Matrix Resurrection. What do you think about that trailer? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Got a Patreon. You want to support what I do? Help me pay for HBO Max, which is probably how I'm going to watch it. Like, I'd like to see it in the theater, but like, I don't... 
it's going to be really crowded for me to try and see it early, and it's going to it's going to drop right on HBO Max. So I'll probably just watch it that way. It's a convenience thing. Um, but you know, if you're not able to support me that way, uh, like, share, subscribe. They help me out. But don't sweat it too much about that either. Take a relaxed attitude around here. So just come on back next time you need a break. Hey, if you're sticking around through the credits, might as well hear some names read out. My Patreon helps support this, and in particular, I want to thank Raven McBain, Bookworm, MJ, Tracy Scrabbit, Vincent Paul Bartolucci, Kaylin Schwartz, Edelin, Robin Moore, Ross Schultz, Shayla Gourlay. Want to hear me mispronounce your name? Check out the rewards on the Patreon.